everybody loves watching Pierre Polyev talk circles, walk circles around Justin Trudeau. But aside from that, which is what most people tune into question period for, you have other conservative MPs that are making a name for themselves. Pierre Polyev's right hand man, or in this case, woman, Melissa Lansman, is very underestimated and overlooked when it comes to her debating points and the energy that she brings to the table during these debates. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. And above and beyond just subscribing, there's a little bell icon that shows up once you are subscribed. If you could just do me a favor and click and tap that, it just adds a layer of insurance. You can be notified of upcoming videos, but more importantly, live streams. We live stream every single question period here on House of Canada, and it would mean the world to me if you actually showed up and participated in the community in the live chat. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this clip of Melissa, Melissa Lansman absolutely just obliterating liberal MPs. Here. Eight years of this liberal NDP prime minister, Canadians know that he's not worth the cost. Even proud liberal and former bank governor David Dodge, who worked for Paul Martin and Jean Chrétien, says that this budget is on track to be the worst one since 1982. Wow. Canadians know that this budget will bring higher taxes, higher spending, meaning even more misery for families who can't afford to eat. Instead of drowning everyone, will they fix the budget, axe the tax on farmers and food, and stop the endless spending with the dollar-for-dollar dollar law so that Canadians can afford to live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stop drowning us. To the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure if the honourable member is aware, but our fiscal markers are very strong. That is a AAA credit rating by an independent objective observer. That is the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. All the while, while we will continue to support vulnerable Canadians, something that they refuse to do on the Member from Thornhill. Speaker, I'm not sure that the honourable member is aware of the pain that Canadians right. feel who can't afford to live in Canada. And what's worse is that they can't even afford to die. The Prime Minister's own news agency, the CBC, is reporting in provinces across Canada, dead bodies are being stored in mobile freezers because people yeah. can't afford the cost of laying That's their insane, loved ones to rest. Man. They can't afford their homes, they can't afford their groceries, they can't afford their gas, and now they can't afford a dignified goodbye. We're asking him him just to stop. We know he won't. So how much inflationary fuel is the PM going to pour on the fire at four o'clock today? Here, here. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, all Canadians deserve to die with dignity. They also deserve supports while they are alive, which is why we have reduced poverty by 22 percent on this side of the House, which is why we have supported families with $10 a day child care and the Canada Child Benefit, which has lifted 500,000 children out of poverty. Mr. Speaker, what we will do on this side of the House is maintain a strong fiscal position while supporting Canadians, especially vulnerable. Honourable Canadians, Mr. Speaker, we take that as our priority, unlike the other side of the House. The Honourable Member from Central Okanagan, Samilkameen, Nicola. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, we know that this Prime Minister and his NDP Liberal government are not worth the cost. His recent spending spree is a th inflationary and making everything worse, adding billions to the debt. This year alone, they will throw $52 billion towards debt servicing. That's more than they allocate to the provinces for health care. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister see his reckless spending is increasing inflation and debt, burdening all generations of already struggling Canadians? Or is he too busy cutting checks to care? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's delve into the numbers a little bit. When the leader of the Conservatives was Minister of Jobs, unemployment in Canada was 11% higher. Wages in this country were 75% of what they are now, and they had our foreign direct investment behind in Ireland, behind Japan, and now, Mr. Speaker, we are thir third in the world, and when you divide it by our population, we're first in the world on bringing good jobs, on bringing investments, on making Canada a place where everybody wants to call home, unlike the Conservatives, which are full of bluff and bluster. Wow. Top of his head's getting red. 
The Honorable Member from Central Okanagan, Similkameen, Nicola. Spendy ways, my friends, spendy ways. David Dodge said that this was likely to be the worst budget since 1982. 1982? Who was Prime Minister then? How out of control was that budget? How broke did Canada and Canadians become before Pierre Elliott Trudeau finally took his walk in the snow? Plus ça change, Mr. The more things change. Two million visits to food banks in a single month. Isn't it clear that Canadians are desperately hungry for change? How many more Canadians need to visit food banks before the Prime Minister really realizes that today's budget is a recipe for disaster? Yeah. Yeah. Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today sounds like a day for some of the greatest hits, so let's put the Conservatives in the spotlight. Mr. Speaker, when we formed government in 2015, one of the first things we did is we asked the wealthiest 1% of Canadians to pay more. How did the Conservatives vote? Against. When we asked to make sure that Canadians and their children could have money coming to their houses every month, how did the Conservatives vote? Against. And now that we're going to have a national school food program and housing across this country and investments to grow this country, how are the <laughs> against. Uh, against the liberals order please Celtic. we're not quite done yet we have another clip of two female MPs bringing the heat you got conservatives versus incompetent liberals I can't just call them liberals because it just turns out that pretty much every single liberal MP is incompetent here is that clip this NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost. But let's hear from some rural <coughs> residents. Judy from Arcona writes, the carbon tax is killing us. And Scott from Tupperville says, as a senior, I'm finding it hard to cope. And Walter from Elvinson writes, I have not even received a carbon rebate. No, most people haven't. Promised budget being set to be <clears> delivered at 4 p.m. today. Will the Prime Minister finally axe the tax on farmers, make food cheaper for Canadians, and pass Bill C-234 in its original form? <laughs> Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd really like to ask the Conservatives, they don't have to wait till 4 o'clock, they could pass the fall economic statement. Because, Mr. Speaker, that is having an impediment on what rural top-up is going. So in my riding, that would mean $1,430 to go every year to a family of four. All across the country, in Alberta, it would mean $2,160. I wish they'd pass the Fez. Then they would truly be helping rural Canadians and rural families. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Well, Mr. Speaker, even the polls tell us that the majority of Canadians are fed up with this Prime Minister overspending, over-promising, under-delivering, and failing this country. Over $52 billion will be spent, to s- spent on servicing his debt alone. And while Canadians are struggling, he raised the price of gas, groceries, and home heating of carbon tax by 23% just two weeks ago. This is punishment, not progress. So in his big deficit budget later today, will the Prime Minister finally axe the tax on farmers and make food cheaper for Canadians? <laughs> They're already anticipating deficit budget. The Minister for Rural economic development. That's just Speaker, sad. I want to tell this story again. I told it a few weeks ago. It was a constituent in my riding who took the time to track every single amount of money that he'd paid. And you know what? He doubled it in case he missed a few things. He was in $38 every time he got his check. I wish they'd do their homework, Mr. Speaker, because 8 out of 10 Canadians do get more with their Canada carbon rebate, especially in rural Canada. That, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between is where we're going to end today's video. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but more importantly, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next live stream. I'll see you there. Bye for now.